free. Three little tips that can help you get some decent results in FM. Even this late in the game, I only found out about one of them today. So tip number one, you've got your tactic all set up looking lovely there. You've even got all your team instructions done down the side and you took the time to do your various play instructions as well. But to set your team on the right track and to get results in a row like this, you need to do everything you possibly can. And that's where this tab up the top here, Opposition Instructions, comes into play. Now when we press this button in every match, you'll see the opposition team in this section here. And then you've got this section down the side there to decide what you want to do with each player. And it can be a bit of a chore and a lot of the time you will forget to do it. But there is an easier way. And it's over here, just next to players there. That shows all the players you're coming up against. However, if you press Positions, it brings up this screen here. So down the left hand side is every position possible in the game that your opposition can possibly put a player. Now you'll see I've already got some instructions laid out. That's because I know my plan for every match and I'm happy with it and I can put it in. The right back and the wing back on the right hand side. So if they decide to play one or the other, they're both going to be covered by me showing them onto their left foot because that's the plan I've gone with. You'll also see that I've got a trigger press ready for the centre back and the centre back left and the centre back right. Now the reason I've got all three on is because if they're playing three centre backs they're covered and if they play two centre backs I'm covered. So that's why it's important to take a little bit of time here. You'll notice down here the midfielder on the right has got the same instructions as the attacking midfielder on the right as well. That way if they play either of those roles they are both covered. So by taking a little bit of time get yourself set up in the way you want your opposition instructions to coexist with your tactic that will do and once you've done that once it's done for every game. No more do you have to come to this screen and do it every time on every player, it's already done for you. Now the next one, it's all about another tab at the top, but this time we're going to set pieces. We're all aware that we have a set piece routine, which horribly needs updated, but I digress. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. Now a lot of us will go for the near post, like I am here with Ehrman for Haaland, but sometimes the goals dry up from corners and there is something you can do about it. If I float on up here to Routine, you can see I've called it Soz Near Post. Now if I drop this down, you'll see Routine 2 and Routine 3. If I press Routine 2, you can see I've organised a new corner with a short corner, hoping to use the guy on the edge of the box, or this guy here, to work it in. Again, if I go to the top again, Routine 3 becomes Routine 3, and this time we'll pin it in and aim it for the edge of the box, looking for runners. So I've got three routines now that will naturally rotate as the game progresses. So what this means is the opposition won't know which corner's coming in, so they won't be able to set for it. I highly recommend this for draft games, by the way, and online, but the AI also get confused. So I'll keep them guessing, you've got three routines to work through. So just like a real life person, you're gonna get confused about who to mark or where the corner's gonna go in at. And the good news is it's not limited to corners, you can use your free kicks as well. So we've got a deep free kick here. We're gonna play it short to this guy here, Bernardo Silva. Now on the second routine we've got, we hit it a bit deeper and aim for the guys in the back post and get a load of bodies in there. So again, we're mixing it up, keeping everyone guessing. Throw-ins next, you guessed it, we're gonna play it short the first time, but on the second occasion, as we flow on up to here, we've got routine two and it's a long throw, so the complete opposite. So you've got options there for corners, free kicks and throw-ins. And remember, if you have more than one routine, they're gonna naturally rotate them throughout the match. And the final one today, again, from the tactics screen, we go up to penalties this time. Then we've got all our penalty takers there. You quick pick them in. There they are. Now, this is one that annoys me, and I've been cut out so many times. So if you look down the bottom of the screen, the game automatically ticks this. Allow a player who has scored two goals to take a penalty. I mean, this is not a charity case. We've got games to win, and quite often, you can have a player like a centre-back, like Laporte did in this match, scoring two, and then he'll step up. And then because he scored twice and we've ticked that box, he'll step up and take away the penalty off your designated penalty taker, in this case Haaland, and he'd be raging. Um, uh... So stop unnecessary penalty misses by unticking that button as soon as you get into this screen, and then players with the penalty ability of someone like Kyle Walker, for example, at six, won't be taking the penalty. Now I know a lot of you probably knew them, but one of those, I'm not going to say which, you can comment down below which you think it is, one of those blew my mind. Anyway, enough of my mind blowing, check out this video, you'll love it.